what will other analysts do now that Morgan Stanley has laid down a big number with 66 pages of detailed work regarding Tesla? What will average investors do with the trove of information coming about coming out about Elon this morning with regard to this new book? Anyway, this is Randy Kirk. If you like what I do here, especially on the mornings, this if you hit the like button, it tells me that you like the morning show and that I should keep going to the trouble to do it. Later on today, you're going to have Brian White around lunchtime, California time. He'll be talking about um, his analysis of whether it's going to be Austin or Mexico, where the Gen 3 cars are going to be built initially. You've got Larry Goldberg coming on later tonight, around 7 Pacific, and he's at the All In Conference, and he says he has breaking news. So you're not going to want to miss that. So hit subscribe, hit notify, so you get notified of all these upcoming events. I will be spending a lot of today reading the new book and uh, figuring out what parts of it are worthy of reporting to you. All right. And then, of course, I will bring up, you know, my favorite toy later in the program. You know you want one. I had the biggest day ever yesterday. One fellow brought 10. Another one bought six. It was a very big day. Anyway, OK, here we go. Uh, Reuters poll uh, comes out and um, on Treasury yields forecast says the benchmark U.S. 10 year Treasury note yield has peaked. According in the in this current cycle, according to a majority of bond strategists polled by Reuters, although most said that their conviction about the prediction was weak, eighty percent or twenty three of the twenty nine who were polled answered they said that the yields on the ten year note had already peaked in the current cycle. Uh, so uh, I'd like to believe that. Um, I think that there's a good chance it's true, especially because most people don't expect the Fed to raise rates anymore. So we'll see. It's still always going to be a battle for the dollars, though. And there's only so many dollars that people are willing to invest in different kinds of of, of, uh, of methods like bonds versus stocks versus, you know, putting money in CDs, et cetera. OK, Business Insider, who I rarely quote, but I'll be quoting twice today. <laughs> but of course, I, I'm quoting quotes, so I think it's okay. Business Insider is not close to being my favorite uh, source. Since consumer spending accounts for about 70% of the U.S. economy, any changes in that measure are a huge deal. After all, the resilience of the U.S. consumer has kept the economy going even amid the Federal Reserve's relentless rate hike cycle since March last year. The U.S. real gross domestic product, our real GDP, grew at an annualized rate of 2.4 in the second quarter of 2023, according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis, a strong beat over Wall Street's 1.8 growth forecast. Of course, um, they're concerned that the consumer will stop uh, spending but because they're going to run out of money. Uh, Bank of America says they got enough money to last till the end of next summer. Um, Bank of America, I assume, is looking at actual checking accounts and, and uh, savings accounts and seeing that they have, last check, last time I heard, four times as much money in checking and savings as they did pre-pandemic. So that's why B of A, I tend to believe their data that the consumer still has the money. Now, will the consumer want to keep that level of money in their banking, uh, in their checking and savings? Maybe. They might be happy that they've got that situation going. All right. About the Tesla competition. Um, so <laughs> about half the stories that have Tesla's brand mentioned in them, I noticed this this morning, have little have a title that has something like Tesla killers or other things related to competitive products. I should probably do an entire video on this at some point. But are you aware that competition in a category is often the very best thing that can happen to a product? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say that again. Competition in a category is commonly the best thing that can happen to a product. I know this is counterintuitive. I've even had a hard time explaining this and, and, and convincing my own sales teams and other you know hot management teams that I've run over the years. But the truth is, is that, it's, that this, is, this is how things work. Right now, Tesla dominates. But as soon as there is a serious player among the legacy makers, this will dra dramatically increase the overall awareness of BEVs as a category, making it a more likely alternative to consider by consumers. 
Right now, they only see Tesla, 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 Tesla. They don't like some part of Tesla. They don't like the look of the Tesla. They need a van. They need a, a, a pickup truck. So they're not even considering EVs. But once you start to get more people in the category, then people say, oh, well, maybe I should consider an EV. Oh, these guys have got an EV. They're my favorite brand. Oh, I anyway, I, I hope you get a little bit of this point. I will probably do an entire video on this sometime soon. So you've seen how the advertising for other EVs helps Tesla search scores. That's another example. Also, good competition creates new ideas, pricing considerations, and marketing approaches that force your own team to stay on their team, uh, on their toes. Hello. <laughs> so let's get some good quality competitors out there that'll help Tesla's brand. Okay. The United Auto Workers dropped uh, uh, their demands down a few percentage points. Um, Stellantis said there's good progress. However, the reporting I'm seeing says that the UAW is still in the mid 30% for their increases. The headline was 30%, but then when you read into it, it was mid 30s. It didn't say anything about a shorter work week and some of the other demands. So I'm thinking this, uh, I, I'm, I, I don't know. They're talking about Thursday night is when the contract is over. The strike could happen as late as, fr as early as Friday. I think they'll put it off. I think they will not have a decision by Thursday night. I think they will both agree that they're getting closer and that they'll put off the decision for a week to allow the Detroit Auto Show to be unmolested. That's what I think is going to happen. We'll see what happens. Now, here I know. Yeah, I'm quoting Business Insider again. It says, the Federal Reserve's Appear, the Federal Reserve appears to have beaten back inflation and skirted a recession for now, according to the Goldman Sachs chief U.S. economist. In a Goldman Sachs Exchanges podcast episode, David Miracle shared his views on the U.S. economy, inflation, and what the Fed's likely to do next. Miracle said that there's all, there are a lot of signs that inflation will fall quite a bit further. That's what I would say. I would agree with that 100%. Lots of signs that inflation will fall further, even with oil going up, as long as it doesn't go crazy. If it gets to 100, 105, I think we're fine. They include a rebalancing of the U.S. labor market, yes, falling short-term inflation expectations by consumers and business owners. Those are two of the things that they say are key to their analysis. Key to my analysis is, Commodities are down. Uh, there's no evidence of, of underlying inflation on, on labor, um, et cetera. So anyway, as for the fact that energy prices are on the rise again, Miracle said, Miracle said, it's a wild annoyance rather than a game changer for inflationary pressures. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I always like people that agree with me. You notice that? I only pulled the, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't just pull their analysis. He noted, however, that the Fed still has work to do in the battle against inflation, specifically in bringing it down to the 2% target, quote, and so the best guess is that we'll get back to 2%, but by no means are we definitively there or even close enough. So it's too soon to say we've beaten the problem, he concluded. All right. From Tesla. I like this headline in Barron's today. Tesla is an AI stock. Apple isn't. Who's next to join the club? This is the kind of headline I want to see over the next two weeks because we want Elon's narrative to take hold. We've got the, the whole thing yesterday with Goldman Sachs um, and, and their comments with regard to a, uh, Tesla being an AI company. Now we want that repeated. We want lots and lots of headlines that way. <laughs> I'm not sure that Apple isn't is true. But anyway, I just like the headline. All right. Mexico, the mayor says everything is a go for a $15 billion, for $15 billion in total investment between Tesla and the various suppliers. So we've got all this discussion about, is it Austin? Is it Mexico? Now the mayor is coming out and said, hey, what's, what's going on? Everything's fine. Again, Brian will be on later today around the noon hour, somewhere around noon, maybe 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock Pacific time, talking about the Austin versus the Tex-Mex versus Tex, -te or uh, no, I'm sorry, Gigatex versus Gigamex. All right. Um, Yadras showing a nine ton Gigapress ready to ship. That's probably for Cybertruck. We don't know for sure. It could be somebody else, but maybe for Cybertruck. And was this for the second line? Uh, ready to ship. All right. 
The book says that many Tesla engineers hated the Cybertruck look, so they quietly created a second version. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. It's a very, very unique design. I'm not in love with the Cybertruck look, but it's cool. <laughs> it's interesting. and It's going to turn heads and lots of people like to drive a vehicle that turns heads. On this one, another one here, the North, this is very interesting. This is really very cool. The North American Council for Freight Efficiency has started its new Run for Less program to test several electric trucks in real world conditions and then release the data in real time. I reported on this several months ago and mentioned it a couple of days ago. There are three new Tesla semi-trucks in the program this year, and the data for the first study was just released. We don't know the loads or even when they were loaded and not loaded. All we know is that what we can get from the information that they, that they sent out, the semi-trucks were able to travel between 376 and 545 miles on the first day. So we'll be watching this. I'm sure there'll be lots of other articles on this. Uh, Tesla China insurance numbers are a bit weak this uh, uh, weak this week, but we do know that there were a substantial number of new Highland models being loaded onto ships sent off. I am assuming to Europe. I don't think any to Australia yet or any of the other local areas. Probably most of them going to Europe. This is unusual for the third month of the I'm sorry the thir third month of the quarter. Generally speaking, it's going to be all sent into domestic. But because you got the new Highland 3, I think what they're doing is they're trying to get these Highland 3s off to Europe uh, as soon as possible. And then they'll start uh, providing to, to the domestic market. Anyway, we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. At 10,000 and change, it wasn't a horrible number. It was just a little lower than one might expect. So I've read about 10 reviews of the, of the new Isaacson book so far, and most of the reviews have been reasonable. Almost all of them hit on the same five or 10 items that most of us real fans already knew. Certainly you would know them and all the fans would know them if they had read the Elon mission and the Elon book, the Elon Musk mission and the Elon Musk method. Then you'd know almost everything that is coming out of this new book. In fact, you would know more because I go into more depth on the methods that Elon uses. I think we'll find out. I'll read the book and I'll let you know. But if you haven't read the, the mission and the method yet, maybe you should. So anyway, here's one excerpt. I'm not sure how your life as a small child went and whether you had some very hard times, but this would be a little tough. At the Wilderness Survival Military School that Elon went to as a child, the counselors deliberately created a Lord of the Flies type atmosphere. They would under ration the food of the children and then encourage them to fight over it. So the bigger kids would just beat up the younger kids and take their food. Near the end of the first week, the boys were divided into two groups and told to attack one another. Every few years, a child would die. The counselor would use these instances as cautionary tales. Oh, sounds like a great place. Wow, man. Yeah, my grade school didn't have that. Okay, one of the biggest themes coming out of the book is Elon's addiction to risk. I question this as basically incorrect he might find risk to be totally acceptable part of his passion and trying to get things done. And you have to have this risk uh, tolerance in order to accomplish amazing things. That's how he describes it, not how others are describing him. Every true entrepreneur has this as part of their core. Non-entrepreneurs don't get it. So in this case, they, they, they're calling it an addiction because they don't get the analysis that an entrepreneur goes through with regard to assessing risk compared to the possibility of success, completely different than most other folks. Another one that they're mentioning is his manic sense of urgency. I had this as one of his 16 traits in the Elon Musk method. It is core to how I ran my businesses, and it is generally seen as a critical component for the success of the entrepreneur the person, the founder, the people that are starting up businesses. This is not to say that slow and steady can't be a great way to run a small business. And it is commonly the way that a second generation leader, a manager, not an entrepreneur, takes the work that the first generation risk taker created and makes the company strong and profitable. Think Tim Cook. <laughs> 
Well, the, the market will generally be a bit nervous about the CPI print tomorrow morning. I think most are expecting good news. So there could be an update based on traders trying to get ahead of that. To that po point, however, oil prices are up this morning, and that's putting a damper on the market and creating a lot of up and down movement in the first 10 or 15 minutes. Um, Tesla finished strong yesterday, but after that one day surge, it would not be surprising to see profit taking today, which was taking place in the, also in that first 15 minutes. Unless there's other good news to support further moves up, we could see Tesla ending up wherever today. Uh, again, I think, as I said yesterday, it will be up, it will be down, and where it ends up might be dependent on news. It might just be dependent on how people are feeling about the market going into the CPI print tomorrow. It's really hard to guess where things are going to be. So let's take a look at where things stand right now. The market right now, let's see here. Well, Tesla is now up 420 after being down three. The Dow is up uh, $57. The NASDAQ is, I mean, sorry, down 57. The NASDAQ is down only seven now, has rebounded strongly from uh, the lows of this morning. The rest of the tech stocks, the rest of the peers, the Magnificent Seven, the rest of them are all down, except for NVIDIA, which was down strongly this morning, is now up a little bit. And all of the Kathy Wood stocks are up. What a mixed bag that is. Let's take a look at the other stuff. All right, here, what do we have here? We have, we have the... Uh, we have Bitcoin strongly up this morning. There must be some news. Um, yeah, there's no news that's pointed out here, but something's going on. It is up almost 5%. Uh, we have the dollar uh, rebounding a little bit this morning after being off a little bit, still at strong highs. Gold slipping uh, a lot, down $16. That's a, a strong move for gold. Um, oil up $1.67, as I mentioned, eight, almost 89 now on the Texas Intermediary. Brent is now 92 it's it's probably going to test 100. Uh, that would be my guess. Uh, bonds are now up 0. 0.008. <laughs> no, two, two O's and a six now just dropped. Um, yeah, the 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 uh, yields have been up all morning. Um, uh, up now on the two month. Up now on the two year. The two year is actually up above the five percent again. That's always not a good sign. Um, anyway, so yeah, interesting that Tesla is up this morning. Uh, some people are predicting that Tesla would have a, a really, really big day today. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Trueflation is up a little bit at 2.7, uh, but still trading in that same range it's been in for a very, very long time. Um, so it will be very, very interesting. I'm just going to look one more time here. Uh, Tesla uh, up three. So it's moving around a lot this morning, a lot of movement. So don't forget, you want to check out that interview with Brian Wong, uh, uh, following up on the details of the Goldman Sachs report. I'll put a card right here. That was yesterday. You uh, don't forget, I got Brian White on at around noon. I've got Larry Goldberg on at around seven o'clock Pacific time. And uh, uh, of course, uh, Brian Wong had lots of useful thoughts on the potential profits from Dojo, FSD, and Robotaxi. Again, there, there will be the card up there. Now, yes. Someone bought 10 of these babies yesterday. Somebody else bought six. It was my biggest day yet. It's just continuing to increase. You know you want one. So get it get it out of your system. Go ahead and buy it today. All you got to do is send your $25 to my PayPal. It's All the information will be down in the description below. Uh, that's per each one you want to buy. Uh, and then, you know, it comes in the camo also, and it comes in this gorgeous gift box. You, If you're new to the channel, Please understand this gift box is really cool. Um, what uh, what you may or may not notice on first blanche is that this is a can a bottle opener rather. So it's great for opening your beers or your other drinks that come in bottles. And then it's a refrigerator magnet and uh, you can put it up anywhere that you've got a magnetic surface. Um, it's $25. Many people think that this stainless steel product that is exactly the same gauge as a Cybertruck should sell for a lot more. So I'm still going to put it up on Amazon one of these days when I get a minute. Um, and I'm thinking I might try it at $29, $29.95, whatever. Um, so send your $25 and or you can get it for absolutely free by joining my Patreon at the $10 level. If you join Patreon at the $10 level, you have a choice. 
You can get either one of those cyber trucks for free, or you can get one of my four books that's on Amazon right now, the two you're seeing above right there, or the the uh, my 20, what's the year now? 30 years out now, when Friday isn't paid, it's been on the market for 30 years and selling for 30 years. It is in the third edition. It was re, I re-upped it about, uh, I forget, three or four years ago. Very, very current, very, very, it tells you how to start a business, how to run a business, how to sell a business. It's, it was called the Bible of, of Small Business by Inc. Magazine back in 1993 when I first wrote it. So uh, 30 years in print, you can get that one for free if you join at the $5 level or get two of the books for free at the $10 level or at the $10 level, you can get one of these for free. Okay, that's all I got for you today. I have enjoyed having this conversation with you.